If I could have watched one video almost a decade ago to at some point in my life become a multi-millionaire, this would have been it. I actually believe everyone can become a millionaire and how to do it is actually very simple. Note, I said simple, not quick or easy, which is what people tell you when they're trying to sell you something. Now, I know that's a bold statement. Everyone can become a millionaire, but I'm going to actually prove it. I'm gonna lay out step-by-step -step instructions with no fluff in this video, uh, explaining how it can be done. My name is Cruz Sheke. I'm a trader, investor, and entrepreneur in the cryptocurrency space, and I've been doing this for about six years. In these six years, I've interviewed over 100 multimillionaires and billionaires. I've also made enough to reach financial freedom myself. Everything I learned, I learned for free. This video here is my means of giving back so maybe others can learn for free themselves. Give this video a chance. Everything I say is backed by logic, evidence, personal experience, and the knowledge of countless others who've done it before. I've simplified it all into a system that you can have for free. This system, however, is just what's worked for me and managed to get me to a point of financial freedom. For all we know, I could just be a lucky idiot. So remember, none of this is financial advice and watch this video for entertainment purposes only. In this video, I'm going to share a strategy to become a multimillionaire investor. I'm gonna break it down so you can understand every single thing that goes into it as well as make it very simple. I'm going to give you the exact formula to figure out based on your current situation when you're going to become a millionaire. Then, if it's not fast enough for you, I'm going to explain how you can become one faster, what strategies you can use inside and outside of investing. And finally, as a bonus, I'll be sharing my own portfolio, which will be very different to the one I share in this video because I've reached my financial freedom level and now I'm operating very differently to someone who's trying to get aggressive growth. One thing that's very important is that you cannot just earn your way to becoming a millionaire. Uh, and I say this from personal experience and examples that you'll have seen all over the place as well. Uh, I knew a pilot who was earning 500K every single year for 15 years. And at the end of these 15 years, he was still in debt. He's earned nearly $10 million and he still is in debt. How many times have you heard stories about celebrities who earn millions every single month filing for bankruptcy, having to sell their houses? Financial illiteracy is an epidemic. And if you do not understand the lessons I'm sharing in this video, you will never become a millionaire. And this is where it gets even crazier. The only prerequisite you need to become at some point a millionaire is the ability to save $500 a month during your career. This isn't to become one super quickly, but this is to become one at some point. I'll explain how to drastically speed up the process later, but first I need you to understand how to do it in the first place. Now, if this sounds impossible, bear with me. Compound interest is what makes this possible, and I am sure you've heard of it before. In fact, 50% of people I speak to have at some point heard of compound interest. So if you've heard of compound interest, then you should know that you only need $500 a month saved up uh, to become a millionaire at some point, and most people who earn average wage are capable of doing that or above. Why is it only 10% of people in the US are millionaires? Remember, I said this is simple. I did not say it's easy. A quote by Albert Einstein to show the power of compound interest. Compound interest is the eighth wonder of the world. He who understands it, earns it. He who doesn't, pays it. What compound interest is, is this process by which your money makes you money, and then that money makes you more money, and then that money makes you more money, and this creates an exponential effect that scales up so fast that it's really impossible for you to ever trade your time to keep up with this. And this is so powerful, this exponential effect that Albert Einstein calls it the eighth wonder of the world. Let me show you real examples. Here's what saving $500 a month can look like at average market returns, not even incorporating crypto, which I'll show you how to do in this video. $500 at the average return of 8% in 50 years will net you $4 million. Now, that's a long amount of time, but if you take a look, it does not take long for you to hit that million dollar mark and it absolutely flies up afterwards. Now let's say you do it a bit more aggressively and instead you're saving $1,000 a month. Difficult, but not impossible. Just $1,000 put away every month over 50 years gives you $8 million at some point, and you become a millionaire way before that point. Now, let's say you use crypto as well, and you take on a bit more risk, and you're able to increase your returns over the long run, you could potentially 
end up with $17.5 million after 50 years of saving just $1,000 a month. And you will become a millionaire way, way before that 50 year mark. Now I'm going to take you through every single step to construct your own money making engine. And I'll give you sample portfolios for what yours could look like depending on your situation. It's important to remember that this is investing and not trading. Everyone should invest. Trading is a profession. It's a job where you go spend time and make money in the market. When we invest, this is separate to a job. It's done with minimal time investment and it's a means of managing our assets. Everyone is an investor, whether they like it or not. Everyone who earns money. So bear this in mind as we get into our strategies. This is not trading. Here are some fundamental key concepts that we're going to use to construct our portfolios. Key concept one, risk and reward correlation. Uh, you always have risk, whether you like it or not. If you hold cash, you're taking on inflation risk because the value of your cash is going to keep going down no matter what. If you hold stocks, you're taking on risk because the stock market might be do badly and the value of your assets might go down. If you're holding crypto, you're taking on a lot of risk because you could be down 80%, 90% in a single year because that's just how the market works. I want to hone in on the cash point because a lot of people think, why do I even need to invest at all? Can't I just put 100K in my bank account and forget about it? The thing is you can't. You, you are choosing to be poor if you do that. Let's assume a 5% loss per year due to inflation. Now, the official numbers are a little bit lower, but I don't really believe those. I think inflation is a lot higher than what people say. So we're going to use 5% as our number here. $100,000 in cash after 20 years is going to be worth $38,500 in purchasing power. So you are losing over half your money over the course of 20 years if you just let it sit in a bank account in the form of cash. You are all investors whether you like it or not. Now this key concept of risk and reward correlation means that every time we have risk, we're going to have a proportional amount of return. Now there are tons of situations where risk and return are not correlated and you can make money off of that difference. However, we are going to take passive assumptions because we're not going to put time into this. This is how we manage our portfolio. We're making a money-making engine that we're just going to put our money in, not have to think about it and become millionaires. Sounds great, right? So for the purposes of this video, I'm actually only going to use four different asset classes, cash, bonds, stocks, and crypto. There are other ones, and I'll cover those in a little bit of detail, but these are the only ones we're going to use for this video. I'm trying to make this simple so absolutely everyone can use it. Now, when we're dealing with cash, we're taking on the lowest risk possible, and in return, we're going to get negative 2.7% per year. Now, I use 5% because I think the number is higher, but we're using real data for this, and over the past 36 years, it's been about negative 2.7% if you've been holding cash every single year. Uh, next, we have bonds. These are IOUs from governments or corporations. The more reputable the government or corporation, the more likely you are to get your money back. Generally, they have lower risk than stocks, and these we view as low risk. And with that comes relatively low returns, roughly 4%. I'm really going rough with the numbers here because the exact amounts don't matter. We're looking at the bigger picture when we're constructing our passive portfolios. Next, we have stocks. Now, stocks are normally seen as high risk, but one, we're only going to be using index funds for this portfolio construction guide, which I'll explain later. And uh, because we have crypto, we're looking at relative risk. So relative to crypto, these are going to be medium risk. And the return that we get is 8%. If you remember with that $500 number, that's what we used earlier in the video. 8% is the returns we can expect. Next, we have crypto. Now, this is going to be very high risk. And we don't have 36 years of data. In fact, we don't have any significant data whatsoever. So I'm using our core assumption of risk and reward being correlated to assume that crypto is going to be more risky than stocks. And we've seen some hyper growth so far, but over the next 20, 30, 50 years, that's going to level out. And we're going to get rewarded for our extra risk now with say 12% returns. Now, this is a very rough estimate and could be completely wrong if the crypto narrative doesn't work out. If you believe in crypto, you want to take this bet. If you don't, I'll also show you how to construct your portfolio, not to include crypto risk. That is key concept one, the risk and reward correlation covered. So we're not trying to be geniuses. We just assume if there's risk, there's going to be equivalent return. That's it. Key concept two, diversification. This is a very powerful tool. I said, let's not try to be geniuses, but there are very few low time intensive, easy ways to increase our returns and reduce our risk. 
Diversification in particular is the act of investing in a wide variety of assets to reduce the total risk within your portfolio. So instead of say, just holding crypto, we're holding crypto, stocks, cash, and spreading out our risk a bit. This way we can get the upside of crypto without completely plummeting our portfolio if crypto doesn't work out. It reduces our upside potential slightly, but reduces our risk greatly. And in the long term, assuming that we're not oracles and we can't make very accurate guesses on the best things to invest in at any one time, it should increase our returns and upside as well. There's one more amazing strategy we can use, but it's not going to be one of our key concepts because it's a bit more complicated. I'll bring that in later in this video. We're ready to step-by-step -step construct our millionaire portfolio. This is going to be the first one we make, and then I'll show you how to increase the speed at which we can reach our millionaire status. Step one is boring. Step two and three are much more interesting. Max out your tax benefits. So uh, there's two ways you can do this. Number one, there's going to be government stuff depending on where you're from. Uh, the UK has an amount you can invest every single year without being subject to tax. Uh, it's called an ISA. The US have their own things. And uh, you want to just research for whatever country you're in how you can best invest without tax. When it comes to $500 a month, there are usually ways where you could do the whole thing tax free. This is one of the best ways to get free return in the market. Zero risk, guaranteed returns, absolutely use it. It's a no-brainer. Next, the other thing you can do if you want is uh, max out your employee schemes. So for some people, $500 might be a lot to save. A lot of companies offer matching schemes where if you invest into your pension, uh, you can get a certain amount matched by the company. So you put in $100 a month, the company puts in an extra $50. Or so if they're really nice, they'll double it and put in an extra $200. So look into those. Those are some easy ways you can get great long-term investing benefits. Now let's get into the much more exciting, less boring stuff. This is really important because remember, our key thesis is risk and reward are correlated. So we need to know how much risk we can afford to take on. Uh, and we do this by first setting our goal amount. For this video, it's going to be $1 million. If you're a part of my accelerator and you're watching this, you're going to have a custom tool, which looks like this, that you can put in whatever amount you want, $1 million, $2 million, $3 million, and get all the same calculations for that amount. But for the purposes of this video, I'm keeping it simple. We're just going to look at $1 million as the goal. So note here that this risk calculator is not perfect. It's just to give you a general idea of your risk tolerance and just as important is your psychology, which we'll discuss later. So here is the risk tolerance calculator. Step one, we look at time. How long can we afford to hold for? Time is the number one advantage you can have as an investor because the longer you can hold on, the less volatility is going to affect you. You don't care if the asset goes down 50% one year because you're holding for a long period of time. And when it comes to something like the stock market, it's gone up 8% a year for the past 36 years. And also well before that, it's continually gone up. We're betting on the world economy continuing to go up. So if we hold on for long enough, it eventually keeps going back up. And trust me, you'll always hear people telling you this time is different, this time everything's collapsing, this is a different type of crisis. Uh, they never tend to be right. And if it really is the crisis where the global economy collapses for years and years, we've got bigger problems to worry about. And it's also going to probably come with hyperinflation and destruction of global currencies as well, not just the stock market. So even if you're holding cash, you're not going to be in a good position because everyone's quality of life is going to be going down. So you're going to give yourself a score, one, two or three, uh, depending on how long you can hold your investment for. If you just started your career, you're very young. If you've got ages till retirement, you can afford to hold for 35 years, you can afford a lot of risk. So you're, you're going to get one point for this. Then if you can hold 15 plus years, this is about the halfway mark for most people's careers till retirement, uh, then you're going to give yourself a two because you've still got a decent amount of time and over a six year plus period of time, the stock market tends to always go up. Now, now, if you've got less than six years, generally the stock market isn't guaranteed to go up. By the time you need your money, your $1 million, the market might go down, in which case you can't afford to take on that much risk and you're going to give yourself free points. The next factor we want to consider is our distance to our goal. 
And the theory here is that the closer we get to our goal, the less aggressively we need to invest. Now, assuming you meet the prerequisite of being able to save $500 a month, if you have less than $60,000, you're still ages away from your goal. So you're going to give yourself two risk points for this. Next, if you have $330,000 and your goal is 1 million, you're about 15 years away from your goal if you're investing $500 a month. So you get four points. And then finally, if you have over 630K, you're almost there. Uh, because remember, this is exponential. The bigger it gets, the more money you make. At the 630K mark, you're going to be there in six years. So don't worry about it. Just keep putting that 500 in. You don't need much risk. Play it safe. Your biggest priority is going to be holding on to that 630K instead of aggressively trying to grow it. Now, finally, we have income. This is our comfortable savings amount. How much can we comfortably save every single month? Now, the theory here is actually that the more we earn relative to our final goal, the more we can afford to risk. Remember, we're not trading our time for money when investing. So if our time is worth a lot of money, we can afford to lose more in the market because we know we can make it back with our time. So I actually designed this calculator myself and I've built in a cool mechanism where uh, if you have a lot of income, you're actually going to reach the distance to your goal very quickly. So even though you can afford to take more risk because you earn more, your risk tolerance is going to go down over time because you'll be able to earn these higher categories very quickly. So you'll get to 330k much faster and when you do, your risk score is going to go higher so you'll take on less risk. If you can save $11,000 a month, then you're a one. You're going to reach your goal very quickly and you can afford to take on a lot of risk. Then if you can save $3,000 a month, you'll be in the next category. You're going to get a score of two. And then finally, if you earn $500 a month, you'll get a score of three. Now, if you can save less than $500 a month, then you don't meet the prerequisites and you need to go sort out your earning potential before you come try become a millionaire. You can also sort out your budgeting and just spend less, however you want to approach that. So finally, add your score up and see what you get. If you scored four to six, you can take on a lot of risk if you want to. If you scored between six and eight, you can take on a medium amount of risk if you want to, and you'll see in the sample portfolios exactly what these correlate to. And finally, if you scored a nine or a 12, congratulations, <laughs> that's a perk. That means you're nearly at your goal, you're safely going to reach your goal, and you do not need to take on much risk. In an ideal world, we actually don't try to take on risk for aggressive growth. We actually focus on protecting our assets and maintaining our purchasing power because we've made enough for financial freedom. So again, being able to take on less risk is a luxury you want. More money for the sake of money is just pointless. Money is a game we're playing. Once we get to the amount we need, we don't need more. Now, for some people, that's a million. For others, that's five million. Depends on exactly what you're trying to get to. This is a video to make people millionaires. So we're focusing on that $1 million goal. So now we're going to move on to step three. I'm going to show you some sample portfolios and how you can construct your own. And then I'll show you how to actually purchase and buy the assets for constructing your portfolio. What I'm going to do in this video is share the absolute beginner, easy, no brainer portfolios to construct. I'll also include steps for people who want to go the extra mile and perhaps include more asset classes like property, like luxury assets and similar stuff. And also within each category, for example, crypto and stocks, I'll have more advanced methods that you can use again to potentially optimize your returns. But remember the 80 for the 20 rule. 80% of the results come from 20% of the work. What I'm sharing here is the 20% that's going to give you 80% of the results. Step three, choosing our assets. Prerequisites for this step. Number one, consider your personal psychology. I've given you your risk profile based on your actuals. These are tangible things like income, distance to your goal, and how much time you have to invest. The other things you need to consider are how fearful and greedy you tend to be. If you have any tendencies towards gambling a lot, if you have any tendencies towards panicking, if you see a big loss, you generally want to take on less risk. It's far more important that you psychologically stick to your system than it is optimizing it for returns. Because however good your system is, if you cannot stick to it, you will not do well. And minimizing losses is much more important than maximizing gains. Most people, in my experience, are less psychologically comfortable than they initially think they are and should opt for lower risk portfolios, at least until they have a bit more experience in the markets. 
This also drastically increases quality of life because you don't have to think about fluctuations of your investments so much. And the next thing you want to do is you may want to prioritize an emergency fund before investing. This can be three to six months of living expenses. So if anything ever happens, you were to lose your mainstream of income, you do have three to six months to be able to rebuild and survive. Life also tends to bring up unexpected expenses that this again can help protect us from. Well, here are some sample portfolios that we've constructed to share with you. The first portfolio I'm going to present is the absolute classic. None of the new crypto stuff, pretty much 5% cash and and 95% target date fund. A target date fund is this awesome thing that combines stocks and bonds. And as you get closer and closer to your target date, it increases the bonds and reduces the stocks. So without you having to think, it manages the risk for you. For someone who isn't bullish on crypto at all, this is one of the best portfolios you can go for. It's suitable for absolutely all risk tolerances because it does build in the risk element for you. Now, something a bit more exciting. I'm going to share what I call crypto sprinkled classic portfolio. If you are remotely bullish on crypto, this portfolio absolutely makes sense. What we do is we reduce the amount in the target date fund and we add about 2.5% crypto. What we're doing here is taking a small amount of our portfolio and speculating on this high risk asset of crypto. If you don't want to stay too up to date with the market, you think there could be something here, you're generally bullish and you have a risk tolerance between 4 to 12, pretty much all risk tolerance levels, you can absolutely include about 2.5% crypto in your portfolio. If it goes to zero, you really don't miss out on much. And if it does well, you can add some significant gains to your portfolio. And remember, in a moment, I'll show you exactly what to buy and how to buy it. Next, we have the Crypto Bull Blended Classic Portfolio. This is uh, the sweet spot, really. If you're bullish on crypto and you want to hold assets long term, you'll increase it from 2.5 to about 5 to 10 percent of your portfolio so if this does go to zero you are taking a reasonably big hit to your portfolio but you're very confident in crypto and you have a risk tolerance between four to eight percent so if crypto doesn't work out you have time to make up for the losses and if it does work out you're going to outperform what you would have done with just stocks and bonds obviously the more crypto you take on the more risk you're taking on so you can choose between five to ten percent when it comes to investing this is in in my opinion, the sweet spot for a crypto bull. If you want more exposure to crypto, don't just buy crypto assets, go get involved in the industry, build a business, get a job in the industry, start trading in the industry. But I don't think investing is where you want to take on a significant chunk more crypto exposure. But I know there are people out there that absolutely do and don't like the idea of stocks with only 8% per year returns, which as we saw from compounding can be very, very powerful. So for people out there who are just turbo bullish crypto, I do have the Crypto Bull Royale with Cheese blended classic portfolio. Now here you take on 10 to 30% crypto, 5% cash and 65 to 85% would be target date fund, which is stocks and bonds. Now, I do not like this portfolio. Like I said, I think you get your extra exposure elsewhere and you are taking on a huge amount of risk with this portfolio. So it's only really suitable for people who score a four or six when it comes to investing. And even then, I don't think you should do it. There are better ways to get risk exposure to crypto and the asset class is too young to bet your entire future on it via investing. It's great to do via career where you're building skills and building income potential, but not via investing. But for those of you who are going to do it anyway, this is the Crypto Bull Royale with cheese blended classic portfolio, only suitable for four to six. So those are your sample portfolios. That's how you decide your macro strategy. You can make adjustments yourself based on what things you personally have researched and are more or less comfortable with. You can also look to add other assets like real estate or commodities and make it as complicated as you like. Simply go out there and research different types of assets and using the same underlying theory of risk and reward being correlated, include them within your portfolio. However, I've found the best results come from keeping your investing very simple and then using that energy to earn more money elsewhere. I'll show you where to potentially buy the assets I've shared and different platforms you can use as well as intermediate and advanced strategies for potentially increasing your returns within the assets I've shared. So we're going to begin with cash. The best way to gain market exposure is just hold the currency of your native country. Examples of this would be if you're an American, you can hold the US dollar. If you're from the United Kingdom, you hold GBP. And if you're from a country that uses euros, you can hold euros. 
The recommended platform for this is a bank account that's insured for losses. Make sure at least up until a certain amount you have insurance if they lose your money. Over the course of a long investing career, this may pay dividends and it's only a bit of extra effort when selecting your bank account. The other thing I think you should look for are bank accounts that have been around for a very long time. These days we have a lot of newer, more modern bank accounts coming out and these are great. They have their utilities. They can be very convenient. However, I personally would not be comfortable holding long term on these platforms. I prefer using more established institutions. Now, an intermediate tweak and something that you can use if you have a large amount of cash is hold multiple currencies. Remember our key concept of diversification? We can use this within cash itself. Instead of just holding euros or just holding GBP, we can hold more than one currency. We can hold a combination of euros, pounds, and the US dollar. And you can also hold any other currency that you, for whatever reason, believe in and want to include within your basket. To give an example, say you had $100,000 worth of cash and you hold $50,000 in US dollar, and then say you hold $25,000 worth in euros, and then another $25,000 worth in Japanese yen. You've now got multiple different currencies and add an element of diversification to your portfolio. Now, the next thing we have are stocks and bonds. Remember, we've combined this to simplify it for the majority of people by finding these target date funds. To remind you, a target date fund allows you to invest in both the stock market and the bond market, tracking market returns. The allocation between the two is decided by how long until you require the money. It automatically reduces your risk as you get closer and closer to your target date. I've left the tickets here for different example assets that you can use, and you can do your own research and find your own target date funds that you like as well. The recommended platforms for these, the ones I like, are Vanguard, Fidelity, Schwab, and Interactive Brokers. Now, personally, I do not use a target date fund. I like to go to the intermediate stage, which is where I pick my own allocation between stocks and bonds. I've done a lot of research into the stock market and the bond market, so I know personally what I believe in and what I want to hold there. Down here, I've left examples of different stock market index funds and examples of bond market index funds for you to go check out. A note for those of you who are doing research into these tickers, there are minute differences differences between different index funds. Some of them like to say focus more on the US market, some of them focus more on global markets, some of them just focus on the top 500 companies. There are minute differences and if you're interested in that sort of thing it can be very fun to look into and find your own allocations. As long as you generally stick to index funds you are keeping within that risk tolerance. And finally, there is the advanced level as well. This is where you can select your own actively managed funds or individual stocks, and you can also hold specific major government bonds or corporate bonds in order to get your bond exposure and your stock exposure exactly what you want it to be. I do not do this because I do not want to invest the time here for the extra percentage returns. I'd rather compete somewhere where I'm a lot more skilled, like crypto, and leave this as very passive and not put much time investment into it. And finally, we have crypto, how to gain market exposure. The absolute simplest way is to split your portfolio 50% BTC, 50% ETH. Those are the top two assets by market cap and the simplest way to gain exposure to the crypto market. This is the 80 for the 20 no brainer version if you don't want to spend too much time diving into crypto. I have two recommended platforms and I'll leave links in the description below. The first one is going to be Kraken, a large well-established exchange that's been around for a while and a good place to on-ramp your crypto. So it's a good place to buy crypto. Then secondly, we've also got Swissbook. These guys are a smaller platform, but one I personally really like because it's extremely easy to use and they're about to add a new dollar cost averaging feature, which allows you to automatically buy 50% BTC and 50% ETH every single month. You set, you forget, and you don't have to think about it. And I really like that. Now, there are other platforms as well, well-established and fantastic, like Binance and Coinbase that are absolutely fine for on-ramping your crypto. 
However, I'm sharing the ones I personally like to use here. And again, these are for investing, not trading. For trading, I use very different platforms. Now, what's also very important is that you do not store your long-term cryptocurrency on these platforms. There is no reason not to use cold storage for your crypto. Get a wallet like Engrave or Ledger. There'll be a full security guide in the description below that you can use to keep your crypto assets secure. Third-party crypto platforms go down all the time and you want to protect yourself from that risk. Now, what intermediates can do is actually change their percentage allocation between Ethereum or BTC. So you may be more bullish on Ethereum, you may be more bullish on BTC, and you may want to change the percentages you hold depending on that. Now, for those who want to invest more time into their crypto, they can look to include individual altcoins in their long-term portfolio. Now, this is very advanced because the crypto market changes so rapidly that even BTC and ETH, we have no clue what they're going to be like in 10, 20 years time, and we're investing for the long-term. So when it comes to new individual altcoins, the top 10 change every single year right now. So you never really know what's going to survive and what isn't. I recommend trading over investing for these but I know some people do like to take smaller bets up to say five to ten percent of your crypto exposure on altcoins just like we spoke about with the overly crypto allocated portfolio I personally believe that this is better left to the trading side of your crypto portfolio so now we know how to construct our portfolio, we know what assets to buy, and we know how to tweak them for both intermediate and advanced people, depending on how much time you want to put in it. So how do we start? Do we just buy it all in one go? Do we buy monthly? Or do we do a combination of both? Well, there's two types of investing. The first one is lump sum investing. That's when you have a big pile of money, like say $10,000, and you want to invest it immediately. For beginners, you probably want to instantly put this into your portfolio you do take on a bit of timing risk. And if you're willing to learn basic technical analysis, historically, there is a little bit of alpha. If you're going to do a lump sum investment, just do it right after a big crash. So for example, if we're taking a look at the Bitcoin chart, we're gonna go over to the weekly and you really don't need to do anything complex. Just wait for there to be a bunch of red candles and try to buy after there've been a bunch of red candles. This is an okay location, this is an okay location, this is an okay location, this is an okay one. Even here, as the red candles are coming, it's perfectly fine, even here, because we've had a bunch of red candles, the price has gone down, it is completely fine. Here, it's probably not the best place to buy. Now, it's okay, it's going to probably continue going down, because you won't buy these perfect buttons, you'll buy here, you'll buy here, or you'll buy here, but the thing is, we're looking long term, and when you zoom out on the crypto chart, and you swap over to something like the six month chart, generally prices do tend to go up over a long period of time. And right now this may look like we've come down a long way, but you would have seen the exact same thing here in 2018. And if we are right about our crypto bet, eventually that will just be a blip on the chart. You can do the exact same thing with the stock market and the bond market. All you need is some basic technical analysis and set yourself a max waiting time of six to 12 months. You really don't wanna be waiting on cash for too long. And if you don't care that much, you can just do the beginner strategy of buying it instantly. Now, the next strategy, which is actually a bit more controversial than you would think, is dollar cost averaging, which a lot of people have heard of. And this is just a form of diversification where we're spreading our timing risk and buying no matter what every single week at set time intervals. Now, that can be weekly, daily, monthly, whatever you really want. But the point is, you don't look at the chart, you don't look at the price. Every set period of time, you just buy. The best way to do this is let the platforms automatically take care of it for you so you don't even have to look at it. You can focus on making money and let your investment portfolio take care of itself. So now you know how to construct your portfolio, what to buy, where to buy it, and how to buy it. So with all this information, how long is it going to take you to reach your goals? Well, if you go on the investor.gov website here, you can see this compound interest calculator. So you can put in your initial investment, whatever that is, you can put in your monthly contribution, whatever that is, the length of time you want to invest for. For the estimated interest rate, put 8% stock market average. Then we can add variance based on how risky our portfolio is. So if we're taking on a fair bit of crypto, we'd add say three or even 4% variance. If we're taking on not so much crypto, we'd keep the variance lower about one or 2%. And you can see this can make an absolutely huge difference. When we take 
a risk level of four, which is one of the higher risk levels, you can see that in 35 years, we're expected at the 8% to have a million. However, you'll see this upper bound number of 2.5 million if crypto works out. But remember, risk and reward are correlated. So if we've got 4% potential extra upside, we're going to have up to 4% extra potential downside, which means we could also make half as much as we're expected to make. Now, these things don't move up in a straight line. In fact, they often tend to go up and down between these two levels. That's why time's our friend, because if we go way up at one point, we may hit our goal early. And if we go way down, we can just wait it up and wait till we get back above what we were expecting to get to. Now, I don't think it's a good idea to just take on a ton of risk. Personally, I like certainty over my future. I wouldn't really take a variance level above 2% on the investing side. I'm expecting my crypto to give me an absolute most 50% than if I was just doing the stock market. Realistically, I'm hoping to get 10 to 50%, anywhere between that, and I'm very happy when it comes to my end goal. The main thing I wanna focus on is this monthly contribution amount. So whatever length of time I have, whatever goal I wanna to get to, what I want to increase is my monthly contributions, my income not taking on a bunch of risk with my portfolio. Now, those of you who have been through my accelerator program know the way I operate on this. I like to first set a very realistic goal, not just a random money goal of I want to become a millionaire. I like to actually look at the kind of life I want to live and figure out how much money I need for that sort of life. Then I set this very realistic thing as my goal. I see how long it's going to take me to get there. I construct a sensible portfolio to help me get there. And then I find that key number, how much I need to contribute monthly to get there and how long it's going to take me. Then once I have this money machine portfolio built up and I'm just putting the money in automatically because I know my percentage distributions, I can go focus on making money. And that's where crypto is fantastic. It's not just a good investment. One person going through the accelerator right now realized that he needs to be earning just a little bit more. And one of the fastest ways for him to do that was to spend six to 12 months learning how to program. We showed him where to do it for free. So now he's going to increase his earning potential via this job and reach his goals much faster. We've got other people who've taken on trading are now in addition to their regular job, making money trading investing that money long term and getting to their goals faster. There are other ways to make a ton of money in crypto. You can specialize as an early project investor. You can specialize as an airdrop farmer. And, and people have actually made five or six figures off of that. Even getting the right NFT whitelist can make you four to five figures even in these market conditions. And then once you make your money, what do you do with it? You don't put it in a bank account anymore. You put it into this money-making machine that we've learned how to build. And this stuff isn't just for people in my Accelerator program. I have made a ton of free tutorials teaching people how to trade, how to farm airdrops, how to find early projects. You can find them all over the YouTube channel. So just go look and you will find the resources out there. You don't even have to use my content. There's other people that do it as well. If you've made it this far into the video, I know you're serious. So here is a bonus strategy that you can use to increase your returns. Uh, this one is called rebalancing. And how rebalancing works is over time, certain assets will outperform others in your portfolio. And this is actually a trick I've used to never take a hit during any of the crypto bull markets. When 2018 happened, I kept most of my profits. When the recent 2020, 2021 bull market happened, I kept most of my profits again. And this is my secret, rebalancing. Once every three times, sometimes once a month, I will check my portfolio. Then say for example, our crypto allocation has gone 10x, which isn't uncommon in a bull market. Now I've got way too much crypto exposure. So what am I going to do? I'm going to sell my crypto and redistribute that into the rest of my portfolio. So I'll put it into stocks, bonds, cash, real estate, whatever else is in my portfolio, I'll spread. And that way I can keep my allocations very similar to the portfolio we've constructed and we're trying to keep to. As a quick note with this strategy, there may be some tax implications. For example, if you're selling a bunch 
bunch of crypto in profit, you'll likely have to pay some tax on that profit. So another way to rebalance without actually having to sell everything is to just change your dollar cost averaging. Uh, if your crypto is outperforming, you don't need to buy crypto that month. Instead, you just buy stocks or just keep cash depending on what your percentage distributions are. Now you can find rebalancing tools online. We have our own one, which we share in our accelerator program that students can use where it will auto rebalance your portfolio for you, tell you how much of what you need to buy depending on different price movements. If you are interested in learning more about that, there's a link in the description below. You absolutely don't need it, but I truly think it's a product that brings value to people and can make your journey faster. If I had something like that 10 years ago, I would be a lot richer right now. So for people interested in my portfolio, uh, now, this is going to be very different to people looking for aggressive growth. The goals with my portfolio are very different and I'll explain it all in detail as I go through each individual category, starting from a high level. At this point, I don't need aggressive growth anymore. I have reached my financial freedom numbers. I know what it takes to live my dream life and I have enough money to do that for the foreseeable future. Therefore, my number one priority for my portfolio is minimizing my downside risk and positioning myself for safe, sustainable growth. I would much rather get a safe 5% than aggressively pursue a 10% or something like that because I do not need more growth. Having said that, I also can't just go put it all into cash because I'm not going to lose a ton of wealth every single year to inflation when I don't need to. So the first part of my portfolio and its core is 55% index stocks. Now, a lot of you might be wondering why I don't slash that number down to 40, 30, or even 20%, something really low. Uh, and the reason for that is I still have a ton of time on my side. And if over the last 100 plus years, the stock market has gone up, and it doesn't make sense for someone based on average life expectancy who still has a ton of years left to not hold a certain percentage of stocks. There are also some really cool things you can do where you never really need to take profit and you can always take out debt against your stocks. Uh, once you get to a certain net worth, but we don't need to cover that in this. Uh, next, I have about 10% bonds. Now, this is really just a way of diversifying and reducing volatility in my portfolio. I go for index funds here that cover the total bond market. It's not somewhere I'm specialized in or somewhere I'm looking for alpha. It is purely a low volatility diversification method for me. Next, I have 5% crypto. Now, this number might surprise a lot of you. And while I was growing my portfolio, this was way, way higher. And during the bull market, because of what crypto prices do, it tends to fly up and take up a bigger portion of my portfolio. But now at this point, I have loads of crypto exposure. It's not just my long term investing. My trading also makes way more money when the crypto market goes up because I trade trends in a bull market. There are more trends for me to trade. Uh, so I make a ton more money. My career is built within the crypto space, my network. Everything I do has crypto exposure already, so I don't need more exposure just by holding long-term crypto. Next, 10% trading. Now, if you remember, I said trading and investing are separate. So this is just something that's worked for me. I know how much I can make trading per year, roughly percentage wise. There's a lot of variance, but I've got a decent idea and I like to allocate a certain percentage of my portfolio to that. It is my main income source and I don't particularly like this. I would like my businesses to become my main income source, but I'm a much better trader than entrepreneur as of right now. As I build my business skill set, I'd like to reduce this trading down to about five, maybe 2.5%, so I don't have to take on much risk and it becomes more something for fun that I do on the side rather than a main cash driver. It's a very time intensive and risky profession. Next, I have 5% cash. This is just a means of diversification and pretty self-explanatory. Now, the next category is angel investing. For this, you need two things. You need to be known as an investor who can provide value to people and you need a means of finding them. So you need a good skill set to be able to help different companies and projects at an early level, be able to provide value to them. And then you also need a network of people who will give you access to these deals. I believe this is something everyone can do because you don't need to be a big public person 
persona like me to do it. You also can just be an absolute genius of marketing and be able to offer consulting services via that. You could have a really powerful network by going to lots of crypto conferences and be able to connect people. That alone offers value. There's a lot of ways you can get involved in angel investing and it's not just the crypto space. Every single industry has their own form of this where people can provide capital. It's very risky. So I only do it with a small percentage of my total portfolio. But again, this is another means at which I can get exposure to crypto, be it via equity or token deals and projects I believe in. Next, I have 1% stablecoin yield farm. So uh, this used to be a lot more when yield farms were more lucrative, but right now it's just a means of diversifying and doing something with my stable coins. I always like to keep a foot in that door, but generally right now the yield farm opportunities aren't that great and I don't want to be spending too much time on it. Finally, I thought I'd just include this. I have 0% real estate uh, because I am not a specialist in real estate. I want to be making my money via crypto, trading, and my businesses. I don't need to learn a new real estate skill set. And maybe at some point I'll want to own a property, but for now I'm very happy paying rent. It's a negligible amount of income relative to my earnings and total net worth. So I'm very comfortable paying rent, traveling across the world, and never really needing to be tied down to one location. And that is my current portfolio and the reasoning behind my different choices. Now, I've spoken to a lot of people about this topic and I know the frequently asked questions that tend to come up. If I've missed anything, feel free to ask them in the comments below and me and my team will try to get back to you. If we don't understand, our time is limited and that's why we create things like the Crypto Accelerator where we know we can get back to people instantly on their questions. So when should I sell? Well, unless you're rebalancing, the goal is to actually never sell your assets until you reach your retirement goal. And even then, you don't necessarily need to sell your assets. For example, if you just wanna live off of your portfolio, the target date fund and things like that will automatically adjust it to make it mostly bonds, reduce your overall variance, and just give you more and more money to live off of year to year. Or if your goal is to buy something like a house and you've used something like an ISA, a tax-free fund, you can actually sell without tax implications and buy that house. I only have five years, what should I do? Well, the thing is, if you only have five years, you don't have one of the biggest advantages you can have when investing, and that is a long time horizon. Remember when we are figuring out when we're going to reach our goals, you saw two different curves going up with a lot of distance between them. Investments do not go up in a straight line. Some years it'll go up 30%, other years it'll go down 15%, other years it'll go down 50%, and some it might go up even more. You never know what's going to happen, and you need to be ready for this. So it's going to fluctuate up and down, and the more time you have, the more likely it is to fluctuate up in your favor. If you've only got a short period of time and it fluctuates down, you're going to be in a very difficult position. When you need your money, you might be forced to take it out at a loss. If you only have five years, you'll see your risk tolerance is going to be really low. So if you only have five years, you're going to need to earn so much money per month that your energy is better spent away from investing. Focus on earning more, focus on picking up a skill set that will get you cash flow or set up your portfolio with low variance and lower growth so you can use that more as passive income than aggressive growth. And finally, what should I do if I suddenly get a large amount of money, inheritance or a large bonus? Well, for this, just refer back to the lump sum investing section of the guide. Generally, you want to invest via lump sum and the larger the lump sum is, the closer it will be you to your goal, the less risk the portfolio will take on and the more likely it is to be safe. And that's it, the video I wish I had 10 years ago. I hope it helps you.